Hi everyone, uh, welcome to CES 2007. I am here live at CES. Thanks for tuning in on Facebook. Um, I'm Brian Elliott and this is sort of a takeover of sorts. I'm doing coverage for what's hot at CES. We're here right now in the Lumix area of the Panasonic booth which is quickly transforming. If you could see everything around me, uh, you'd see uh, New York City subway scene and all, uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. I'm flanked here by Lumix expert Matt Frazier. Matt, welcome. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate it. And then over here, you probably recognize uh, Griffin Hammond, who is the Lumix resident and expert. Uh, been using the GH product since its birth. Yeah. He's also a filmmaker and uh, doing all kinds of other stuff. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And I have a GH5. <laughs> oh, already spoiling it. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Um, so for you filmmakers and creators um, who are using the GH series, um, we're going to break it down and announce kind of what was done in a formal press release about an hour ago. We are talking about the much anticipated, much awaited GH5. Um, super exciting. So I'm going to go here first with Matt and kind of break down a little bit what's different between GH4 and GH5 this year. Well, I mean, we've gone to a completely new sensor in the camera. So it's a, it's a 20 megapixel sensor. Um, for filmmakers, what they're going to really appreciate also is that uh, in 4K, we used to have to crop in a little bit. Um, it's now completely on crop. So you're getting the entire width of the sensor, which means that your 12 millimeter lens will behave like a 24 millimeter on the camera, which I think is a huge benefit to the camera as well. Uh, it does 60p 4K video, whereas the GH4 was limited to a 30p capability. Uh, 180 frames per second and 1080. So a slow-mo function that's really a beyond competitor right now in the marketplace. Um, the bit rates are incredibly impressive too. Your 4K is going to be initially available at 150 megabits per second. For you nerdy people out there, it just means a lot of data. Um, but on top of that, we're going to do some firmware updates to the camera. That'll be free releases. Um, one of those firmware updates is going to add what's called an all intra 400 megabit data rate, which I can't think of a single camera in the market that can approach that. Okay, that's a lot of information, which I'm sure all of you we tech geeks... We scratched the surface, by the way. There's way yeah. more stuff in there. No, I'm eating it up. I love it. I mean, I've been using the GH4 for a long time. I'm a, I'm a fan and a user. Um, for those of you who know my series behind the brand, that's how we shoot this you know, web series is all on GH4. We shoot two, three, four cameras at a time um, and all kinds of different Lumix lenses. And the other thing is right now we have a different lens on there. It's the cool thing about the GH series is it can pretty much pull it on and adapt any kind of lens that you want to put on. Um, before I go to Griffin, I want to make sure that you guys are giving us a shout out. So be sure to share this broadcast. Um, let us know where you're checking in from. Where are you watching? Are you watching from, well, we're in Las Vegas. I'm from Los Angeles. You're from, from New York. Yeah. So where are you at? Make sure you leave us a comment, tell you where we're at. And also um, tell us how you're using this kind of gear or maybe you're new to this and you, you have lots of technical questions. I'd love to hear from you. Griffin, let's go to you. So tell me, you're holding the new GH5, much coveted. Yeah. Um, what are your impressions so far? Well, this is my pre-production model, uh, and it's outstanding. I shot a short documentary with it. I shot it in 4K 60p, uh, which I could use in slow motion if I wanted, but I opted to go with the full like hyper-real frame rate, which looks really great. It's actually playing on these TVs behind me. Uh, I, and you didn't mention, Matt, the uh, in-body image stabilization. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I, I think I'm going to get slapped on the wrist for that. Well, no, no, you, there's so many things to mention, but like that for me was huge, just the fact that like this 12 millimeter doesn't have image stabilization built into the lens, but now it does because the body can do it. Um, let's back up just a little bit too. So you've got your own YouTube channel, and you're probably, at least I found you organically just by search trying to figure out how to configure my GH4. Um, when Matt's not available on my, you know, red phone emergency tech call, um, I go to your YouTube channel. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, they can just Google my name, Griffin Hammond, and you'll find my YouTube channel. I have lots of tutorials there. And, and what's the focus of your channel? I think it's important to share what I learn, and I want to grow as a filmmaker, so I share a lot of videos about the cameras I use and the techniques I'm trying and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, one of your most popular videos is on the GH4, and it talks about how to configure it and all the settings that you recommend, not necessarily factory settings, but like what you as a filmmaker personally recommend. Are you going to do the same thing for the GH5? Definitely, yeah. I think people have come to expect it now. When is that coming out? Because I want to know, too. <laughs> um, I guess sometime between now and when orders ship. Uh, I have some time, I guess, uh, a couple months. Right on. Uh, let's go back to Matt for a second. 
Um, all that technical stuff that you mentioned, uh, I think it's going to be posted where? On the lumixlounge.com? Right, so lumixlounge.com is a, it's sort of a, a holding place for everything we do socially on, on the web. It's a great place to be able to get information on the product. So I highly recommend they go and check that out. We'll have all of the technical details there. And obviously panasonic.com will have that information as well. Uh, give us some more tips on um, maybe how we might not be thinking about uh, using the new GH5 compared to past models. Well, I think if there's anything people should look at is the improvements we've made in it as a photo camera. I mean, it, it's been so well documented as a, as a video and professional video camera that people forget you can actually take photographs with it. And we've improved the, the sensor. It's a 20 megapixel sensor. And we've removed the anti-aliasing filter to give it a really sharp image. But more importantly, we have put the autofocus system on steroids in this camera. The new depth from defocus system that we've integrated makes this a lightning fast camera for autofocus. It really improves the video autofocus as well. So our 4K photo and now 6K photo functions, which again, for those of you who don't know, if you, you have the ability now to shoot video at 18 megapixels at 30 frames per second, and you can pull every frame of video and it's an 18 megapixel still image, um, you need an incredibly fast autofocus system to be able to take advantage of that. And we recognized that that was a bit of a shortcoming in the GH4, is that it couldn't hold focus as quickly as you'd want. Um, the camera's much better at autofocusing in video now, which means that 6K photo function is much better for autofocus as well. How does that stack up? Um, maybe I'll go back to Griffin and, you know, there's some other competitors out there, let's face it. Um, you know, there's a Canon, there's a Sony, there's a Nikon. Um, those are full frame cameras, right? So how does this stack up and how do you compare apples to oranges in this case? Well, I actually think like there's a lot of great cameras in the market. Like we're living in a wonderful time when it's easy to pick up uh, for a relatively good price, just a great filmmaking tool. I do find myself gravitating towards the Panasonic ones just because they've listened to filmmakers over the years and added a lot of features that I need yeah. that makes me feel like this is a more video friendly camera than maybe some of the other ones on the market. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can speak uh, the same thing. I mean, the battery life on this thing is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I can shoot all day and have no worries. You mean you have uh, to change a battery every 30 minutes? <laughs> correct. Yeah, I love the battery. I also love how low profile and light it is. You know, like sometimes when you need to be lower profile, you need to be out of sight or more incognito. I mean, this just looks like a tiny little, you know, uh, camera that's shooting like a Hollywood movie quality picture. Um, yeah, this is like my style of shooting. It's just kind of like yeah. up against my body, really. Nothing's <laughs> happening here. Look away. You know, like you're walking down the streets of New York. Yeah. And I did a red carpet event and I was able just to be on the red carpet because I was wearing a tuxedo and had a small camera and they didn't kick me off. Yeah. I think the other thing to uh, differentiate is the price. I mean, the price is ridiculous. So it's almost, it's a steal. I mean, you sh it's underpriced, I think. Um, for the amount of power and capability it has. It's just, I mean, I can buy three of them for the price of someone else's camera. Is the GH5, how's that, do we know what the price is yet? Yeah, so uh, we finalized that. It should be uh, $2,000, $19.99 $0.95. So a uh, very affordable camera. I think, yeah. I think the key here is to remember that to get something with a 10-bit internal recording capability and the professional tools that this has, even things like waveform monitoring, which allows me to set my critical exposure across the entire frame and be able to pick out things that are hot in the shot. Like in this shot, these monitors behind us were hot. I had to knock them down because they were just too bright. Right. Um, I can see all of that with the waveform monitor. You're at a minimum of about $8,000 to get what this camera gives you for under two. Yeah, I mean, it is a huge value. And we've got a couple of Diva lights here that are giving us some lights. Um, Griffin, maybe tell us uh, an upcoming project that you plan to shoot on the GH5. You know, I don't really know. I just shot this documentary in 4K 60p. I could see myself doing something back in 30p or 24p and using the slow motion, using 60 as a slow motion tool. Um, but I don't know. The, I, was, I just covered the election with the GH4. I made a documentary about Sriracha with the GH3, so who knows what I'll do with this. If you're just tuning in, we are live on Facebook here. Thanks for tuning in. And we want to hear your comments. We want to know what you want to know about the new GH5. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm Brian Elliott. It's a sort of a takeover here with Matt Fraser, who's the Lumix product guru. Uh, Griffin Hammond, who's the filmmaker and sort of aficionado on everything GH uh, and Lumix in terms of field use. 
um, and we're here at CES before the, the storm happens. I want to know where you're watching from. Are you in Las Vegas with us at CES? Are you in California, New York? Leave us a comment. Make sure to share this broadcast and let us know what you want to know about the next uh, iteration of the GH. I'm super psyched about it. Uh, guys, any final words? Yeah, I think a couple of other notes because there's so many things to talk about. Um, the camera really covers a, a broad range of users from you know my mom who would probably be able to use this camera and pick it up very easily and it's intelligent auto mode, be able to take pictures and shoot videos. Um, for her, we are implementing a feature called Bluetooth low energy, which allows us to keep it constantly synced to our smartphone and pull things like GPS data and put it right into my images. Oh, and cool. it makes transferring pictures much easier. So it makes the Wi-Fi app work just better, um, which I think is great for the entry level user. I also think professional users are going to like this because it pushes the clock information from your phone into the camera. And then we've added features for professionals like dual SD card slots, the ability to name your files. So instead of it, when you go into that DCIM folder and then you try to find that project, yeah. you can now name your project for each of those. So for this thing, you could have named it, you know, GH5 launch. Yeah. And each of the files could actually have a designation for it. So yeah. you could put, you know, G and M for Griffin and Matt for each of the files. So you know each of those videos was us. And yeah, and, and if you're new to post production, the reason, or if you're new to taking the video and then exporting it and to edit it somehow, it makes it so much easier, whether you're working in Final Cut or, or uh, Premiere, to be able to batch those together so that you don't have a whole big line of 1000078, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 79. Well, and for photographers too, you know, if I'm, if I'm taking my kids' uh, graduation, I can put, you know, Hannah's graduation or H grad, and then I know that that's her graduation. I can have Tyler's, you know, birthday party, and it makes it easier for me to be able to sort through those things very quickly and fast, you know, and, and that's great. On top of that, I can even take all the settings from the camera, and I can put them on the SD card and hand them to a second shooter and input all those settings into another camera, right, through the SD card or through the Bluetooth. So we're trying to make it simple for first timers and then incredibly powerful for professionals. And there were some features like the dual SD card slots that I thought, I don't need that, that's for like a professional photographer or something and I'm a filmmaker. But then I realized all the time lapses I shoot, I can send all the photos to one card and all the videos to another card. Previously, I'd just been like, dragging certain things off the card and putting them in different folders, but now it's like, I can do that. So what you're saying is when you hit the video record button, that video is like here, and then it's in between maybe some of the time lapses here, yeah. and then some of the, yeah, it, yeah it's a nightmare, it a I get it. mix, yeah. But now it's like allocated, and you can do relay record where it just keeps recording onto the second card, you have a few options. Yeah. No, it's, it's an incredibly powerful tool. I think a lot of first timers will gravitate to the camera just because of how powerful it is, and they'll be shocked at how easy the camera is to use and get good results. Maybe a final word and advice for budding entrepreneurs and filmmakers. You know, uh, the struggle is real, right? <laughs> Can you agree? Yeah, but I think I found that I think if you make the projects that you want to see in the world, like you guys asked me to make a short documentary with this camera, and I could have made just like a beauty shot thing, but I wanted to make a film that I wanted to see. And I had a lot of fun doing it, and I think that'll lead to better opportunities. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, uh, this is Brian Elliott with Griffin Hammond and Matt Fraser. We're here in the Lumix area. We're calling it the Lumix subway. It looks like a New York City subway, if you can see all around. It's a little cleaner. It's a little cleaner, but hey, I was just in New York maybe last month. It's, it's, New York is looking great. If you're tuning in from New York, give us a shout out. I had a ton of fun there. I was in the subway station at the Javits Center is beautiful. I will give you that. That Javits Center subway station is very nice. We were there right around the New York City Marathon. It was super fun. The weather was great. Anyway, love New York. I'm from LA. Thanks for watching Facebook. We'd love to continue to get your comments and feedback. Love to know where you're checking in from. Give us a shout out. Make sure to share this broadcast. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks so much. Peace out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>